In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create your own magazine cover that you can show off to your family and impress your friends. There are so many styles of covers to choose from. Feel free to pick one as a starting point. In this project, we'll create a cover for a photography magazine. While it is easy enough to import a single image, here we'll learn how to import multiple images at the same time. Start by creating a new document and set the primary color mode to RGB and the page size for your magazine. For this example, select letter size page. Hold the control key down while tapping the letter I to bring up the import dialog box and navigate to where your images are stored. Simply click and drag from this window directly onto your CorelDRAW desktop. If your images are in multiple locations, then in the address bar, navigate to the other locations and drag those images in as well. See how much simpler it is and how much quicker we can bring these images in. Once you're done, click Cancel on the Import dialog box to close it, and then reposition the imported images on the side of the page so that we can now work on them. The Power Clip feature allows you to take an object or group of objects and put them inside a container. The objects can be raster or vector, and the container must be a vector object or group of vector objects. Start by double-clicking the Rectangle tool. This will create a page frame that we can use as our Power Clip container. Next, select the image that we want to put inside this container. On the Interactive Property bar, I'm going to set the height of this image to 11.5 inches. Make sure that Maintain Aspect Ratio is selected, and then hit the Enter key. Now, from the Effects menu, I'm going to go to Power Clip and Place Inside Frame. Now, using my cursor, simply point to the container that I'll want to put this image into. To edit this, again, from the Effects menu, down to Power Clip, and select Edit Power Clip. This allows me to reposition the image into the location that I want it. Once I've positioned it, and I'm happy with that, I'll simply go to my Crop tool and crop off the excess that I don't require. Once any of the modifications or positioning have been done, back to the Effects menu, down to Power Clip, and finish editing this level. Next, I'm going to create three rectangles for the other three images that will be used. Two of them are 2 inches by 1.5 and one is 2 inches by 2 inches. Using the lock aspect ratio and the horizontal and vertical input dialog boxes allows me to accurately create the rectangles that I require for this project. I'm going to resize the image of the daisy and power clip this into the 2 inch by 2 inch rectangle. This time, select the flower image and right click and drag the image on top of the rectangle until the cursor changes to what looks like a crosshair. Release the mouse button and then left click on the option to power clip inside. To edit this, simply hold the control key down and click on the container. I'm going to type a value of minus 90 in the angle of rotation field on the interactive property bar to rotate this image 90 degrees clockwise. Next, I'll resize it and position it exactly where I'd like it. You'll notice in the status bar that the image is 457 dpi, but more importantly, it's been rotated. There are some basic guidelines to follow when working with raster or bitmap images. Do not place one bitmap on top of another. Do not rotate a bitmap. And do not resize a bitmap by simply grabbing the resizing handles and moving them towards the center. If you must do any of these, after this is done, with the bitmap selected, go to bitmap, convert to bitmap, select the same color model, in this case RGB, and the resolution that you require. In this example, change the resolution from 512 dpi to 300 dpi. Failing to do this will cause longer print times and potentially larger files. To finish editing the power clip, simply control-click outside of the container. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and power clip the other images and we'll return shortly. Okay, let's move on. Lenses change how an object or area beneath a lens appears. It does not actually change the properties and attributes of the object. You can apply lenses to any object such as a rectangle, ellipse, closed path, or polygon. You can also change the appearance of artistic text and bitmaps. In this design, you'll learn how to create a simple transparency lens. From the toolbox on the left hand side, select your rectangle and create a rectangle that is 2.5 inches across and 11 inches in length. You can verify the dimensions in the interactive property bar and fine tune it up here. With the rectangle still selected, hold the shift key down and click on the background image. Tap the letter R on the keyboard for right align and now give the rectangle a solid black fill. From the toolbox on the left hand side, under the interactive tools, select transparency. On the interactive property bar, change the drop down from none to uniform. And now set the midpoint to 30. Next, position the three power clipped images on top of the lens. And holding the shift key down, select the images and then hold the control key down and tap the letter E. This will evenly space these images. Control G to group and now with the shift key held down click on the lens itself and tap the letter C for center and E for even. Let's move on to creating the text. Krill Draw deals with two types of text artistic text and paragraph text. Artistic text is text that is typically used for signs, banners, headers, and titles. It is also used when creating logos and in other situations where the designer may need to modify the characters. Paragraph text is primarily used for what is referred to as body copy. It is ideal for large blocks of text such as in a report or instruction manual as it has similar formatting capabilities to that of a word processing application. In this project, artistic text will be used. When creating text for a magazine cover, font selection is important. You want the text to stand out. It must be able to be read from a distance and draw the viewer's attention. For this reason, it is preferred to use a sans serif font that is bold and more of a block style. In this project, Arial Black is being used. Select the text tool from the toolbox and click anywhere on the screen. Type the word macro. Similarly, create the word photo. Note that these are all in uppercase characters. Next, from the interactive property bar, change the font to Arial Black and for the word photo, set the point size to 110 points. The word macro, make that Arial Black as well and we're going to set this point size to 20 points. Position the word macro to the left of the letter P after rotating it 90 degrees. With both pieces of text selected, move them into position on the cover and tap the letter G while holding down the control key to group these. Next, control D to duplicate and then click on the yellow in the color palette. Now position the yellow piece of text over top of the black with a slight offset. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the text and then we can move on to the barcode wizard. Barcoding is an identification method that lets you collect data. The barcode wizard within Corel Draw lets you generate barcodes in a wide range of industry standard formats. Inserting a barcode is very straightforward. From the edit menu, select insert barcode. This will launch the barcode wizard. Within the wizard, there is an option to select the type of barcode. From the drop down, select EAN 13. These are generally used for periodicals. Enter 12 digits in the first field and 5 digits in the second field. Then click Next. In the next panel, you have an option to adjust the properties based on industry standard guidelines. Leave all the settings as they are and just click Next. 
Now, depending on the type of barcode selected, there may be the ability to modify the text properties. In the case of EAN 13 code, it is not possible. Simply click Finish. This will place the newly created code in the center of the page. Now it's simply a matter of moving it into position. Creating a magazine cover can be a lot of fun. Using a few simple tools in Corel Draw and following some basic principles of design can make it very interesting and very rewarding.